What's up everyone? Welcome to a new video. Today I'm going to share a truth with you. Did you know that the only constant thing in the whole universe is change? Every living being, even the earth and the universe itself, we all go through constant changes. For human beings, the most latest and the biggest change that we have gone through and we are still going through is the world pandemic. It has taken the lives of our beloved ones, imposed restrictions and changed our lives in a way that we have never imagined before. Even way before pandemic, we were still losing our beloved ones and that is a huge change for us. We have gone through career changes, breakups, divorces and any other major and small changes that we have all experienced in our lives. Besides this, there are very big future changes that are coming towards us. These changes are global warming, artificial intelligence, automation, genetic modification. By the way, did you see that pig heart transplant? That was insane. These changes are inevitable. We cannot escape them. The only way to survive these changes are to face them. In the summary of the power to change, I'm going to share the tools with you to help you understand these changes better and also how you can survive them. So stay with me till the end of this video. For easier understanding, I've divided the whole video into five parts. Part number one is change matrix. Imagine that you are standing on an oil platform in the North Sea. You walk to the edge, you see below. It is dark blue water, which is freezing cold. Would you jump in that water? I don't think so. Now imagine that the same oil platform catches fire and the fire rescues you from behind. The flames are huge that it can swallow you in seconds. You have no other option for survival but to jump. Would you jump in this scenario? Hold on to this metaphor because this metaphor is going to help you understand the change in matrix. There are four kinds of changes that we all go through. These two questions broadly define the four types of changes. Question number one, how big or small the change is. Question number two, if the change was initiated by yourself or it was imposed on you by others. Now let's further divide these two broad categories to four metrics. The first kind of changes are small, but they are imposed on you externally. Let's name this adopt. The example of these kind of changes are shutdown of electricity by the government or any other external factors for some time or weather change. The second kind of changes are small changes that are imposed by yourself. And these changes are called grow. An example of these changes are meeting new people or moving houses. The third kind of changes are big changes, but they are imposed by other people. These changes are called burning platform. And the example of these changes are pandemic, losing a loved one or migration. The fourth kind of changes are the changes that are big, but they are imposed by yourself. These are called quantum leap. And the example of these kind of changes are getting married, switching career, or moving to a new country. Now that you understand these four kinds of changes, let me share with you the predictable nature of these changes. Part two, change curve. Small changes that are imposed by ourselves or by external factors. They are so common and we are so used to them that we don't even consider them as changes. They are very easy to go through or experience. But big changes such as burning platform changes or quantum leap changes, they are a totally different story. They are so difficult to face and in some situations they are so difficult to survive as well. But don't worry because it doesn't matter how big these changes are, they all follow a predictable pattern. And this pattern is shown through a curve. Burning platform changes and quantum leap changes, they both have their own change curves. But first, let us understand burning platform curve change. It is very similar to Kubler-Ross change curve. Let me walk you through a burning platform change example. 
Imagine that, God forbid, you were to hear that you have lost your beloved one due to COVID-19 virus. You would probably react to that news with a shock. And that shock is a, a very normal reaction in burning platform changes. After that initial shock, the curves start bending towards negative emotions and behaviors. And you will reach the next stage, which is the stage of denial. In this stage, you will try to deny the reality. You will tell yourself that your beloved one is still alive and nothing has happened to him or her. When you can't deny the truth, you start getting angry, which is the next stage. In this stage, you get angry, you shout, and you may even react physically. When you have no other option but to accept the reality, you start fearing. Fearing is the next stage. In this stage, all the terrible lost images of your beloved one start filling your mind. How he or she was going through these medical challenges before death. Finally, you may sink in depression because of all these thinking that come to your mind. You may stay there for a while, but after that, the curve will bend upward again. You will start to accept the change and you will move to the next stage of your life. These changes in the curve could happen very quickly within a very short period of time, or it could also take some time and it happened gradually. Now let us understand quantum leap change curve. For these, let me walk you through a quantum leap change. Imagine that you are changing your career. When you move to a new career, first, the excitement about all the new adventures that are coming to you arises up. Second comes anxiety. You get anxious of, what if I don't succeed in this new career? Third comes fear. You start fearing, I am going to fail in this new career. Which leads to the final part, regret. You start regretting, I should have never quit my old job. But if you survive all of these difficulties, the curve will start bending upward towards rational optimism. And in this stage, you will rationally understand the change and you will believe that you can handle this change. And when you push yourself with self-affirmation, you embrace the change by getting fully on board and ready to make the change happen. Many people quit just on the stage of regret and they don't stick with the change until the curve bends upwards. Whether it's Quantum leap changes or burning platform changes, going through the difficult parts are not easy. And in the next part, I'm going to share with you how you can handle these difficult parts. Part 3. Handling the tough parts. I really wish that all human beings that go through the changes could have the ability to skip all the difficult parts and directly jump on the good parts. It happens, by the way but it happens very rarely. Not everyone is fortunate enough. The ups and downs are all natural part of human change. But the most common mistakes that many people make during the tough times is that they self-blame themselves or they go through the victimhood. They try to escape, ignore, and try to avoid all these difficulties. These are traps and they can put you on a very dangerous path. Be aware of these traps and try not to get persuaded by them. When we are going through these difficult stages, it means that we have lost something, whether that something is tangible, such as the loss of your beloved ones, or it is intangible, such as the comfortable familiarity in your old job. And loss is hurtful. When you go through a hurtful process, it is very easy for these traps to tempt you. For example, if you have lost someone, it is easy to prevent the grief by turning the blame on yourself or trying to go through the victimhood. You may think that you didn't do enough to save his life. You may also think that you did that to cause his death. You did this to cause her death. If you continue on this path, you will end up on a very dark place. Whenever you are tempted by these traps to escape any hurtful process, just tell yourself that all of these difficulties are natural part of the change. You just need to be passionate and everything will get back to normal soon. If you really need to move forward, you have to let these feelings out and confront them in the open. But I understand, saying is simple, but doing or acting is the most difficult part. But don't worry, here's how you can handle these emotions. Part 4. How to handle victimhood. The tough situations of both change curves are very sensitive. That is why you need to handle them carefully. Remember that in the previous part, I told you that in order to move ahead, you have to face these emotions. Many times people make a mistake that they start chasing the feeling of victimhood. 
Don't do that because that is an opposite extreme of self-blame. It is equally unproductive and unhealthy. Here's how you can handle the feeling of victimhood. First, you have to acknowledge that you are victimizing yourself and also all the dangers that it can pose to you. When you are in the process of recognizing that you are self-blaming yourself, you must also remember that whatever caused that situation was out of your control. But how you respond is in your control. By remembering this, you put yourself back on the driver's seat and take control. Next, think of victimhood as a triangle consisting of three people. The first person, you, the victim. Second person is the persecutor, whom you think that has wronged you. The third person is a friend or family member or any close person that tries to comfort you while thinking or reinforcing that you are a victim. This third person has good intention. They only come to help you, but unconsciously they reinforce the sense of victimhood on you. In order to get out of this triangle, you have to reconceptualize these second and third person. Treat persecutor as a challenger and the rescuer, the third person, as a coach. For instance, imagine that you're fired from your job that you loved or you're rejected from your dream job. Now think of your boss or the hiring committee as someone or a group of people who challenge you to find a better job. Now think of the friend, the colleague, the relative or the family member who comforts you as a coach that can train you how you can take and handle this change or challenge. Besides victimhood, another very common trap is fear. How you can handle fear? Let's explore that in the next part. Part number five, how to handle fear. When you go through any change, fear is a very common part of that change. There are three common kinds of fear. Fear of failure, fear of unknown, and fear of blame. Let us understand fear of failure. Quantum leap changes especially provoke this kind of fear. You start thinking, what if moving to a new city doesn't turn out as I expected? Or what if the business that I started fails? To get out of this kind of fear, lay out all the consequences that can happen to you. In simple words, lay out what is the worst case scenario. Unless we clarify the worst case scenario, it can haunt us as it is the end of the world. But in reality, when you clarify what is the worst case scenario, you realize that it is something that you can easily handle and it is not that you can fear. The second kind of fear is fear of unknown. This is the fear of all the uncertainties. For example, you don't know how to navigate in that city. You don't know how to start a new business. You lack all these different skills that you need. These can serve you as an opportunity to learn new skills and grow yourself. The third type of fear is fear of blame, fear of looking bad. You start fearing. What if things go wrong? People will start blaming you for all those mistakes. In this situation, don't take those blames as criticism. Take them as just suggestions to bring improvements in your life. Listen, my friend. No doubt, change is always difficult, whether it's good or bad. With the tools and tips that I shared with you, now you know the process of the change and you may be ready to go through any change in your life. But that doesn't mean that there will not be any difficulties, challenges in those changes. There will always be setbacks, disappointments, discouragements, loneliness. There is one last tip that I haven't shared with you yet and that is to build the skill of resilience. When you are resilient, no big storm of challenges and changes and difficulties can break you and you can build resilience by trusting your abilities that you can overcome all the obstacles in your life if you take only one lesson away from this video i want you to remember this whatever happens to you is not in your control but how do you respond to that situation challenges difficulties or changes that is definitely in your control thanks a lot for watching See you in the next video. Much love and bye.